I sort of went and did a course. I decided one day I wanted to change my, my career. Went and did a course in 3D animation and then started working straight away in the TV industry. One of the, the main things that you really need to, to have is, a, is some kind of artistic background. You don't need to be a fine artist, but to have an artistic eye, you know, good observational skills. Um, it, 3D art is a, is a combination of technical skills and artistic skills, so if you've got some kind of appreciation of, of subjects like maths and physics, it does help. It's not necessary, but it does help. But a good art training or education is always helpful. Um, obviously, you need to be able to focus and work, work well and hard and uh, be a good problem solver as well because the whole industry, even though it's been around for 20 years or so, um, is always developing and there's always a, the necessity in production to solve technical or artistic problems on the job. For Codemasters, of course, we're a game studio, so we generally look for people who are really avid gamers. You know, if, if the people love to play games, they're going to understand the way that the game gets put together, the way that the artwork looks, the way the animation looks. So that's one of the first things, is an actual personal interest. As I think one of the things is, is as people get educated in the public about the concepts of what 3D animation or 3D art is, and that knowledge sort of disseminates amongst people, um, parents, government, education bodies, as that, that information sort of spreads out more and more and people start to understand a little bit more about what the different 3D industries can do, I think that's only going to help to bring the young people, the, the new art talent if you like, into the industry to sort of bolster the industry for the future because we're always, always, always looking for new, new talent, new skills, um, talented people. Generally, I'd say that parents probably aren't aware of how lucrative an industry the 3D industry is. The games industry, for instance, um, the games industry overtook Hollywood in terms of its, the amount of money that it grossed several years ago. So there's a lot of money being made in a lot of different levels in, in different companies as well. That's one of the things that we try and strive for is to, from, from Codemasters, is to not just to train our own staff and to train new uh, interns but also trying to work with the colleges a little bit so that we can we can sort of spread the knowledge around the, the students parents is one thing and government bodies as well so that we can educate them as well tell them showing them what uh, how strong an industry the 3d games industry really is and how much potential there is here in, in Malaysia um, and it's just as a viable a career for any young person as being a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or a scientist um, and it's definitely fulfilling and of course young people love games so it's going to be something they're going to enjoy for, for many many years. They'll work on designing on paper and then they start building a 3D model <coughs> and then from there they start to do the textures which is basically the materials that you see. Is it a brick house? Is it made of stone? Is it got wood elements to it? And once they've got those kinds of elements and made textures and applied them to the 3D model, then what they can also do is start to... One of the things we look at in Codemasters is, is realism. And one of the things in realism is damage and dirt on objects. You know, our, our, our rally game, Dirt 2, is cars getting dirty and broken and smashed up all the time. So we have to learn how to make things look bad after we've made them look good to start with. So that was one of the things they'd concentrate on is is messing up the textures for instance and once they've done all that then um, they can export the models and they'll get put in put into the game engine and try it out and make sure there's no faults and if there's anything that needs fixing comes back and they'll they'll repeat some of the work and then they submit it and uh, then it goes into the game so, and right now we're working on some new games we're working on Formula One 2010 which will be released for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 as well and we are working on a, a brand new um, first person shooter called Body Count, which is um, technically and artistically, it's a big challenge for us. We've, we've gone for a very stylized, artistic, but realistic look, very grimy, dark, dirty, sort of realistic world environments. Um, and one of the things that's a technical, technological and artistic challenge for us is to make almost 
all of the environments, all of the settings, the buildings, the equipment that's in the, in the game, all shreddable, which basically means as you're going around shooting things, you can destroy them with your gun on many, many levels, which has been a um, sort of a technical challenge for us to develop the technology to do that kind of thing in an in-game environment. But um, if you, uh, you have a look at some of the artwork that the, the artists have worked on, it's looking very, very nice so far. So that'll be something to look forward to. It'll be an exciting new concept in first-person shooters. It's been tried before, but this is a pretty much a fairly groundbreaking sort of achievement, I think, when we get this out.